August 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 9 through 11 from the Old Testament. Then Job answered, Truly, I know that this is so, but how can a human be just before God? If someone wishes to contend with him, he cannot answer him one time in a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who has resisted him and remained safe? He who removes mountains suddenly, who overturns them in his anger. He who shakes the earth out of its place so that its pillars tremble. He who commands the sun and it does not shine and seals up the stars. He alone spreads out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He makes the bear, Orion, and the Pleiades, and the constellations of the southern sky. He does great and unsearchable things and wonderful things without number. If he passes by me, I cannot see him. If he goes by, I cannot perceive him. If he snatches away, who can turn him back? Who dares to say to him, what are you doing? God does not restrain his anger. Under him, the helpers of Rahab lie crushed. How much less then can I answer him and choose my words to argue with him? Although I am innocent, I could not answer him. I could only plead with my judge for mercy. If I summoned him and he answered me, I would not believe that he would be listening to my voice. He who crushes me with a tempest and multiplies my wounds for no reason. He does not allow me to recover my breath, for he fills me with bitterness. If it is a matter of strength, most certainly he is the strong one. And if it is a matter of justice, he will say, Who will summon me? Although I am innocent, my mouth would condemn me. Although I am blameless, it would declare me perverse. I am blameless. I do not know myself. I despise my life. It is all one. That is why I say he destroys the blameless and the guilty. If a scourge brings sudden death, he mocks at the despair of the innocent. If a land has been given into the hand of a wicked man, he covers the faces of its judges. If it is not he, then who is it? My days are swifter than a runner. They speed by without seeing happiness. They glide by like reed boats, like an eagle that swoops down on its prey. If I say I will forget my complaint, I will change my expression and be cheerful. I dread all my sufferings, for I know that you do not hold me blameless. If I am guilty, why then weary myself in vain? If I wash myself with snow water and make my hands clean with lye, then you plunge me into a slimy pit and my own clothes abhor me. For he is not a human being like I am, that I might answer him, that we might come together in judgment. Nor is there an arbiter between us who might lay his hand on us both, who would take his rod away from me so that his terror would not make me afraid. Then would I speak and not fear him? But it is not so with me. I am weary of my life. I will complain without restraint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, do not condemn me. Tell me why you are contending with me. Is it good for you to oppress, to despise the work of your hands? While you smile on the schemes of the wicked. Do you have eyes of flesh or do you see as a human being sees? Are your days like the days of a mortal? Or your years like the years of a mortal, that you must search out my iniquity and inquire about my sin. Although you know that I am not guilty, and that there is no one who can deliver out of your hand. Your hands have shaped me and made me, but now you destroy me completely. Remember that you have made me as with the clay. Will you return me to dust? Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? You clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. You gave me life and favor and your intervention watched over my spirit. But these things you have concealed in your heart, I know that this is with you. If I have sinned, then you would watch me and you would not acquit me of my iniquity. If I am guilty, woe to me. And if I am innocent, I cannot lift my head. I am full of shame and satiated with my affliction. If I lift myself up, you hunt me as a fierce lion, and again you display your power against me. You bring new witnesses against me and increase your anger against me. Relief troops come against me. Why then did you bring me out from the womb? I should have died and no eye would have seen me. I should have been as though I had never existed. I should have been carried right from the womb to the grave. 
Are not my days few? Cease then and leave me alone that I might find a little comfort before I depart, never to return. To the land of darkness and the deepest shadow, to the land of utter darkness, like the deepest darkness and the deepest shadow and disorder, where even the light is like darkness. Then Zophar, the Naamathite, spoke up and said, Should not this abundance of words be answered, or should this talkative man be vindicated? Will your idle talk reduce people to silence, and will no one rebuke you when you mock? For you have said, My teaching is flawless, and I am pure in your sight. But if only God would speak, if only he would open his lips against you and reveal to you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom has two sides, so that you would know that God has forgiven some of your sins. Can you discover the essence of God? Can you find out the perfection of the Almighty? It is higher than the heavens. What can you do? It is deeper than Sheol. What can you know? Its measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he comes by and confines you and convenes a court, then who can prevent him? For he knows deceitful men when he sees evil, will he not consider it? But an empty man will become wise when a wild donkey's colt is born a human being. As for you, if you prove faithful and if you stretch out your hands toward him, if iniquity is in your hand, put it far away and do not let evil reside in your tents. For then you will lift up your face without blemish. You will be securely established and you will not fear. For you will forget your trouble. You will remember it like water that has flowed away. And life will be brighter than the noonday. Though there be darkness, it will be like the morning. And you will be secure because there is hope. You will be protected and will take your rest in safety. You will lie down with no one to make you afraid and many will seek your favor. But the eyes of the wicked fail and escape eludes them. Their one hope is to breathe their last. God, it's hard to watch Job struggle. Not because I think he's doing something wrong or right, but because I've been there. <laughs> Some of his words are words I've actually said to you before. As, as I am so frustrated with certain situations, and it's not that I'm blameless. Holy cow. You and I both know that I'm not. Um, but I get into certain situations where, but I do know that there are situations where, where I was in the right, biblically, and situations. And yet the sweeping punishment that came down encompassed me in that situation as well. A and you say in the Bible that, that all of that will fall on the just and the unjust. And that's what Job is wrestling with right now. Um, and yet even with as severe his wrestling is, he still turns it over to you and says, even though I believe I'm blameless, who am I to even say that to God? Don't you know who God is? <laughs> Are you serious? And then we see his friend, his second friend answer him so far. Um, and Zophar thinks he knows just like his other friends. But he says in verse 7, Can you discover the essence of God? Can you find out the perfection of the Almighty? It is higher than the heavens. What can you do? It is deeper than Sheol. What can you know? It is, its measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Um, so Zophar is talking about exactly what we believe Job is talking about, that you are sovereign God, that your ways are so much bigger and above anything that we could ever imagine, that who are we to question? But no, Zophar goes on to say, and you've obviously done something wrong. So <laughs> Zophar goes from you are sovereign and your ways aren't anything that even makes sense to us, nor should they because you created us, to putting you in a box. A box that completely makes sense to Zophar in the situation. The only thing that makes sense to him is his friend has done something wrong. His friend is arrogant about it and his friend needs to come clean. And God, I think that putting you in the box thing is something that we all sin at doing. We all at times in our lives have tried to figure you, figure you out. We've all asked the eternal questions. Uh, but even in our day in and day out life, we try and figure you out. Meaning, 
if this situation is going to happen, I believe that God would handle it this way, this way, and this way. So I'm going to respond this way, this way, and this way. And I'm just going to move forward. Not checking in with him, not checking in with the Bible to make sure it's biblical, but I'm just going to move forward because I'm pretty sure he, he would be good with what I'm doing. It was so fascinating today. I was talking to uh, one of my one of my youth kids who's growing up super fast um, today. And, and she says, sometimes it gets hard to pick because instead of the choices being really far apart where one is obviously right and one is obviously wrong, the choices start to be really close together where technically they're both right. But one I want to do and one God wants me to do. Ah, so does that technically still make them both right? <laughs> It is very hard when they start to get closer and closer like that. And we want to put you in a box, especially, well, this is a right decision. I'm not sinning. I'm not hurting anybody. Um, seems like a good thing to do. Um, I could do things for God in this situation, but that doesn't mean it's what your will is for us. So we try and put you in a box. We try and figure you out. I'm really bad at this because anytime anything happens in my life, um, good or bad, um, as my friends have pointed out to me, <laughs> as my wise friends, not friends like Job has, but my wise friends, my wise friends have pointed out to me, I try and figure everything out. Um, my process goes into almost detective mode and I, I do go to you and I do go to the Bible and I try and piece all the pieces together. A and that's exactly what Job's friend is doing here, which is wrong. I want to understand your will, but a lot of times I go overboard and trying to put you into this box that makes sense so I can move on to the next thing, the next good thing or the next bad thing or solve the bad thing. But I like things in my life fixed. I like things in a box tied with a bow, put up on the shelf and we move on. It's how I've always dealt with things or as one of my friends calls it, my checklist of things that I check off and then I can move on to the next thing. And you're really clear, especially in the book of Job. We don't get to do this. You get to run this world. We don't get to second guess you. We don't get to question you, nor should we. Because there's two things that are really important for us to remember. One, you're sovereign and you made all of this around us. And two, if we truly trust you and have faith in you, then that will glorify you because it shows that we know you're sovereign and want, want what is best for us. I was reading this crazy awesome thing that John Piper had put up, Pastor Piper had put up today, and it talks about uh, the 10 things that the name Yahweh is. Um, the name Yahweh, of course, is I am. Um, and it goes through all of these amazing things that it says about you, God, that you never had a beginning um, you will never have an end, that you're absolute reality. Um, and then the fourth one is God is utterly independent. He depends on nothing to bring him into being or support him or counsel him or make him what he is. Everything that is not God depends totally on God. The entire universe is utterly secondary. It came into being by God and stays in being moment by moment on God's decision to keep it in being. All the universe is by comparison to God as nothing. Contingent, dependent reality is to absolute independent reality as a shadow to substance, as an echo to a thunderclap. All that we are amazed by in this world and in the galaxies is, compared to God, nothing. And it goes on to talk about how you're constant and your absolute standard of truth and you do whatever you please. And it is always right and always beautiful and always in accord with truth. All reality is outside of you. You created and designed and governed as the absolute reality. So you are utterly free, as John Piper puts it, utterly free from any constraints that don't originate from the counsel of your own will, of God's own will. And, there, and there's more. It was an amazing devotion that he had this morning. So understanding that you aren't dependent upon anything. You are, you always have been, you always will be. Nothing will change that. Definitely not me trying to put you in a box will ever change who you are. I am completely dependent upon you. I exist at this very moment to do this recording because you chose for me to be in this moment and recording this. 
right after I finish this recording, you can turn the lights off on me, on everybody in the United States, on everybody in the world, if you so chose. You could choose not to have the sun come up, the stars come out tonight. Everything is dependent upon you. Even, and this is what humors me, even people like Zophar and people who are atheist. doesn't matter whether they believe in you or not. You aren't dependent upon them. You are constant. And I think that all of that starts getting really exciting. Now, if I could only remember it in my day in and day out life, that would probably help. And I'm definitely going to need your help and your strength at remembering you are sovereign. You are constant. You don't need any of this. There's nothing, absolutely nothing in this entire world that's going to change you. You and your name mean I am. You have been, you are, and you always will be. I am. We will always be dependent upon you. There's never a second in our life when we aren't dependent upon you, even if we try and claim our independence. So God, just give me the strength today to quit trying to put up this enormous amount of energy and fight to become independent and think that I want to control my own world when your choices for me are so much better than anything I could ever hope for. You will always want what is best for me. And for that, I am incredibly thankful and blessed and at the same time stunned and confused that you would offer something like that to someone like me. God, I know that you love me. And I know that everything that happens to me is for your reasons. Some I understand, some I don't. Some I might never. But it doesn't matter. Because my faith and trust in you is what is ma what matters. Day in and day out. Not putting you in a box, but letting you exist in this endless, extreme, sovereign world. Universe. Beyond whatever the universe is. That you created at the end of Piper's devotion today it says God is the most important and most valuable reality and person in the universe he is more worthy of interest and attention and admiration and enjoyment than all other realities including the entire universe and I guess that also includes my entire universe that so often I think revolves around me God you are the most important thing ever just help keep my heart in place so that I remember that in your son's name I pray amen <laughs>